Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thanks so much to everyone for uh, the wonderful presentations and for this very important conversation. Uh, we have ha we have a lot of people on, and I can only direct my questions to a few people because I only have less than five minutes. Um, I'm going to um, direct my first uh, question to uh, Mr. Saul from the uh, Community Food Centers of Canada. Um, you had uh, mentioned that there was an announcement by the federal government of uh, $100 million to improve uh, access to food for Canadians who are uh, facing difficulty. So whether it's, uh, you know, social needs or economic needs. Um, I know that um, the Canadian Food uh, Centres Canada did receive some of that money. My question to you is twofold. First is, do we have yet an idea about what the increase uh, need has been at our food banks. So the numbers as well as who's actually uh, going to these food banks. So that's part one. The second part of the question is, what more do you feel we have to do around food security right now? So not only just in our cities, but sort of along the line. So if I could maybe have you take a stab at, res at uh, responding to that. Uh, well, having spoken to some of the leaders in the emergency food space, I think you can say, you say that uh, Demand is up by anywhere between 25 to 50 percent, depending on the region. Um, and I, I think we need to be very clear that the the sector was hemorrhaging long before COVID came in. I mean, the vast majority of people who are food insecure in this country would never visit a food bank for a whole variety of reasons, which I won't get into here. So um, the, the the folks who are showing up, racialized communities, women, young people. Um, these are groups that have historically been marginalized and uh, COVID has absolutely magnified that problem. Let's be very clear that people have been affected disproportionately by, by COVID. There is simply no way you can self-isolate if you're five people in a single apartment with one bathroom. There's no way if you're you know, poorly employed that you're going to find a flexible employer and there's no way you're going to buy extra food uh, because you simply have no money often to, to buy food in the first place. So uh, the, there is much anxiety and stress in communities across this country and many people showing up for the first time because they were shed from the labor market and they're showing up and saying, I need help. So the short term is, uh, and, and, I, and I think that the $100 million that was released, as I said in my remarks, has had very good impact uh, and supported many people through a very difficult time and will continue to be important in the medium term. But I think we do need to return to uh, social supports and, and building incomes that uh, will fireproof us over the long term. And I've, I've talked about some of those things. Uh, so it is about income. Food will not solve hunger. Income will. And we need to have strong social infrastructure to support people and an economy that produces jobs that support people to actually make a living and take care of themselves and their families. Okay. Thank you so much. My next uh, question is related to comments that uh, uh, Professor Mulligan and Mr. Serre had mentioned. Um, uh, Professor Mulligan, you had mentioned uh, that there's data that we should be gathering that we're not ga gathering. And uh, uh, Mr. Serre, you had mentioned that the pandemic is presenting us with an opportunity to think about how do we shift um, our social welfare system uh, to a system that will better support um, our workforce in the 21st century. You didn't use those exact words, but I'm paraphrasing you. And so I'm wondering, uh, Professor Mulligan, maybe if you could uh, start off by being a little bit clear about what data we should be gathering, because I truly believe we should be gathering more data and we should be very aware of what. Mr. Serre, if you have any comments about additional data that you think we need to uh, also uh, have, uh, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Thanks for the question. Um, you know, for some aspects of data, Statistics Canada has to go out to the provinces or to Canadians and do a survey. It can take a long time. But for other pieces of data and, and data sources, the government of Canada is already collecting it. So this is what we call administrative data, data that's used in the administration of programs. So we see that in the emergency response benefit. Now, as of last week, they're updating three times a week with the number of applicants to the emergency relief benefit, which is why we know there's now 7.1 million Canadians who are on that benefit. And that's the exact kind of thing we need, but we need to make sure that we have that kind of very timely, up-to-the-day data for the other emergency benefits that are being put in place. So that's uh, one aspect of it, but we can do better than that by using the same kinds of administrative data in different government sources and making sure they become available in a secure and privacy compliant format um, to inform 
uh, the policy decisions and the decisions of all Canadians that need to be made. Thank you. And Mr. Serre, I don't know if you have anything to add. Mr. Serre? Mr. Serre, do you have anything to add? On, on mute your phone, uh, Pierre. Le petit, le petit bouton. Yes, that little button that I always forget. Im the EI system was not ready. And the current regime only protects 45% of workers. And it excludes important parts of the population. This crisis proved that to us. 15% of the labor force, and that represents about 20 million people in Canada. So 15% of the labor, labor force has no protection. They have a bit of health insurance and there's temporary employment and there's telework and environmental transmission transitions that are going to change the work environment and the current EI system is not ready for these changes. And that's why the government needs to start reflecting on all this and have a more modern regime. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Suray. Yep, I think there's going to be some lessons learned by the time we come out of this. Uh, the